Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. It's great to be back here with you. Even though we're live streaming only, uh, we have our worship team here, and we thank God for a few guests. Uh, we want to abide by uh, what our city and state and government officials have, have recommended, and, and to do it is unto the Lord. And we believe we're going to get the results that God wants because He is spirit and He is truth, and he will do what he will do. Amen. And so let's worship the king from your homes, uh, from your tablet, from your car, wherever you're at. You shouldn't be driving and watching, by the way, unless you're not driving. But enjoy today. Thank you, Jesus.
mountains and seas. Your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free.
pray that the Holy Spirit is as thick in your house or car or wherever you're at as he is right here in this place right now. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, or where the Lord is the Spirit, there is freedom. And that's what we have in Christ today and every day. We have the freedom from the power of sin and death, the, the law and the things that through which sin has access. And we thank Jesus for that glorious freedom. Thank you, Lord. Both of you may be seated if you want to. <laughs> you know, I'll probably never get to say that again. I mean, I, maybe next Sunday, but maybe not. Uh, just want to, and Jessica, if you'd stay, I'm going to ask you to say some things about uh, how the website works for offering and things like that. And uh, Greg, don't go anywhere because I want to ask you what happened last night around the world from this location. That was powerful, brother. Whew. Man, we were having a, an elders, a board meeting right in the room across the hall from this room. And we could hear you preaching to Australia, uh, South Korea. I wish it was North Korea too. Uh, maybe it was. And um, Spain and, and the Philippines and South Africa. Thank you. And where? Yeah, in the States. Alaska. I mean, if anybody's still up there. They are? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They're still up there. Um, I just wanted to let you folks at home know uh, why we're doing it this way, in case you're wondering. If you're a part of Kingsgate, we called yesterday, tried to make you all aware of it, uh, but some of you are outside of this area. I know I got an um, a, 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 a iMessage uh, from a lady we used to pastor, my wife and I did, up in Canada uh, about 15, 20 years ago, and she said up in Edmonton where she lives, she said all the churches are shutting down. She said it's like scary to her. And uh, it's happening everywhere. So um, we got a notification after the board meeting last night. You know, we had a really great board meeting. And then I get, and on my way home, um, Pastor Grant uh, sends me a, a message that shows where the mayor is, um, is like uh, telling people to, uh, sh you know, stay in place. Don't leave your houses except for essential places to go to. All non-essential places should shut down completely. And as of three hours from that point when it was released. And I said, wow, that doesn't leave us much time to get the word out. But I wasn't this, you know, peaceful about that, just to let you know. And so, um, so what we did was I started texting with, the, um, with members of the eldership board. And uh, we started talking about this and dialoguing and things went back and forth. And um, I looked at what council had said about it because they need to eventually sign off on it. But the mayor has the authority to decree this. Because he was given that power in case of an emergency, and that's what this has been declared across our country and in this uh, state. So um, it, it's, that's the le le legitimate authority. But the question was, is, is the church essential or non-essential? And we really went back and forth, couldn't find anything. We were like in the twilight zone there. And so finally, the, you know, we, I called, um, God bless Councilwoman Nettie Davis. I called her the personal line that she has. And she called me back as I'm walking in the door this morning. God bless that woman. She's, she's spoken here. She's a wonderful, powerful uh, woman of God uh, who sits on the council. And uh, she said, I said, what do we, where do we stand as churches? 
And she said, well, what the mayor has decided and the council has said too is, is that we should meet in groups no larger than 10. And that we could do live streaming or people could do a devotional from their, um, you know, on Facebook, uh, from their phones or whatever. And so I said, well, that's exactly what we're about to do in a couple of minutes. So I want to let you know that uh, we believe in, in being obedient to authority as long as it is of God. And like if they told us that you can't preach anymore in the name of Jesus, well, we've got Peter. We'll go to the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2 for that one. Uh, but they're not asking us to do that. They're, we're a team, folks. We are a team of people called Americans or residents of America, if you're not a citizen. And, and we have to work as a team because that's what it's going to take uh, to, to cause a, sh a quicker ending uh, to this um, pandemic of the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. And so that's why we're doing it this way. Now, we're going like, you know, week to week. Uh, this coming uh, tonight at 6 o'clock, you don't want to miss this, we are having a, a uh, medical doctors panel discussion which with three uh, medical doctors that happen to be a part of this church, and they also work uh, in the North Mississippi um, uh, Health Services, North Mississippi Medical Hospital, which is the biggest regional hospital in America. Uh, carries a little bit of authority that way. And uh, so these men are going to be speaking at 6 o'clock tonight in a panel discussion. I'll be moderating it. They're going to be sharing their, um, their understandings and their uh, um, recommendations for us to, to be safe or what happens if you feel not well and things like that. And what about travel? I asked uh, Dr. Charles, who's going to be on it tonight, I asked, said, well, I'm supposed to be going up to Seattle in a month with my wife uh, to see family. And again, he said, well, all non-essential travel should not be made. So now I gotta figure out, uh, Dr. Greg, if my family is essential or non-essential travel. I am telling you, it does not get any easier here. You know what I'm saying? Is my family essential? Like if, if, if there were, if, if Noah was pulling up the gate and he said, he said, Terry, come on, get on, you can get on. I said, if, well, I have some uh, family members out here. And he says, well, are they essential? You know, I mean, that would be a tough call, you know, if it was, if it was them or me. Yeah. I guess I'd have to learn to swim fast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not trying to make fun of this situation, but folks, these are things that we have to decide, you know, what we're going to do. And we're going to go uh, by what the, what the rule of the um, government says, and um, we support our government. And, um, and we want them to know that, um, that we've got their backs, as far as not compromising, but as far as prayer and undergirding goes. Because we're to pray for all those in authority, the Bible says in Timothy, especially the kings. That means a president in the United States. That it may go well with us and that we may live peaceably in the land. So, I mean, if you're disobeying the authority, that's not, I mean, why would you be praying for them? You know, maybe so that they'll let you get away with it. So anyway, uh, so that's tonight at 6 o'clock. It'll be for about an hour and a half. And, um, and we hope that you can tune in and invite some people to join you uh, for that panel discussion, question and answer. You can Q&A on Facebook, and uh, you can call uh, the cell number that's going to be given out, which is 662-397-1149. You can text your question uh, to that cell number, okay? And so this um, Wednesday, we're also going to do live stream at 630 till about 8 o'clock or so with a worship theme similar to what's going on here right now. Uh, our Sunday school classes have been um, canceled for now. And, um, and, but Thursday night prayer, believe it or not, Thursday night prayer is live with as many of you as want to come. And I can say that without any fear of overcrowding. <laughs> and here's, I got a plan. I got a plan, Dr. Gray. Um, what we're going to do is once we hit a maximum of 10 people at that prayer meeting Thursday night, we are going to then load you up in another building. We have four buildings on campus. And then once we hit 20 people, we go to building number three. And once we hit 30 people, we go to the gym. And, that, and once we hit 40 people, we're going to thank Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? You know, uh, I think it was... Um, who was it? Charles Finney. He said something like this. He said, the, the attendance at the morning service shows the, um, the popularity of the, of the preacher. And he says, the attendance of the church at the Sunday night service 
tells you the popularity of the church. And he says, but the attendance at the prayer meeting shows you the popularity of God. Man, it's really quiet in here right now except for the four people, <laughs> six people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. They're, these are the amenners. I didn't hear anything out of Gerald in the sound booth. Uh, but it, he's back there. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, we want to show God he's popular here at Kingsgate. Okay? And so, um, and then next Sunday, um, I would say tune into our website. Jessica's going to come now and tell you a little bit about that. We're posting up there what we're doing. And the President of the United States has asked for this to go 15 days. That means from a week ago yesterday, a week back, to a week from today through the day. So that'll be 15 days um, on that first um, Sunday of April. So uh, just be ready, folks, to go the distance, or I mean the 29th of March, that's what it is. It's uh, 15 days, March uh, 29th, and we believe we're going to see something there happening. My wife uh, heard a very good prophetic word from a, uh, an, uh, a very well-known prophet, can't think of his name right now, but he said he believes that around Passover, which is our Good Friday in the, in the church, uh, in, in Christendom, uh, is, is when this thing is going to really be dealt with. So um, I, I pray it doesn't even take that long. Jessica, would you come please and tell the folks a little bit about, if they want to give, how can they give besides snail mail? Right. So good morning to everyone um, live and in-house this morning. Um, we have worked tirelessly to make sure that our calendar on our webpage and our app, they're all up to date, everything's there. Um, all communications, we're trying to get everything there. So if you have any questions about what's going on, we invite you to visit the webpage or download the app. Um, so all that information's there. And we've got uh, Facebook going out. The If you can't find the event or you want to join live stream tonight for the, the medical panel, you can join that event right there. Um, we've got that posted on Facebook. And then if for your giving, you have multiple options. So for giving, you can use the app. There is a link in there on our webpage. You can do that also. Or if you're sitting right there and you've got your phone, you can text the, the word Kingsgate to the number 77977, and that will open up a link, and you can give your tithe or your offerings or whatever else you'd like to give into the kingdom right there from your phone. So if you have any questions, we're here. Um, give us a call, log on Facebook, message us, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to serve you. Or if you need anything, we're also here for that too. So we haven't gone anywhere. We're still here and we're still loving Jesus. So thank you. You know, if you have to go somewhere, if you have to go somewhere, be sure to tell somebody about the Lord. Yeah. You know what? I'm, ser I'm serious about this, folks. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yes, last night was a wonderful opportunity. We have churches that are in different places of the world that Pastor wanted us to share about and how this house is uh, helping us to be able to communicate with them and to bring the word of the Lord to them. Uh, last night, Trinity Broadcasting Network of the Pacific uh, tapped right into the computers here and uh, use the software that they broadcast with here on a, on a weekly basis to help us broadcast all over the world last night right from here. And so I think there were probably, this was a private broadcast. It wasn't one that just went through the entire network. It was for our network. And we had probably somewhere around 250 initially that were watching live right from here, from Australia, from uh, Spain, Philippines. Uh, help me, Joe. Uh, South Africa, here from the States, from Hawaii, Alaska, uh, uh, Louisiana, and, and even from this area. And so we're just thankful for what God is allowing this house to do. And we're taking advantage of this situation. The word crisis we shared last night, it also means opportunity. 
And this is a great opportunity for the church to shift into another gear to be able to reach more and to expand the kingdom of God more. When we were worshiping this morning, the Lord had spoke a word to me. I'd just like to share it real quick. Very, very brief, simple word. And it was this to the church. It was that I've not forsaken you. I have positioned you. And I really think we need to hear that today because what you're doing is just not worship in your home. You are releasing in your community an atmosphere that may not have been there before. And you're allowing Holy Spirit to use you to reclaim that territory to where you live and where you're watching today for the kingdom of God. So God's doing some things that you can't see, but it doesn't mean He's not working. Amen? It does mean that He's working very strategically. And I just hear we need to take advantage of this situation. And Kingsgate is meeting in multiple places around this region today. You have more campuses today than you've ever had. And you, God is, is causing territory to be taken that has not been taken because a stake is being driven to the ground where worship is going on today. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Uh, just stay right here. Sure. Is that it? Am I on there, Gerald? There we go. Okay. Um, when we were singing earlier... Uh, one of the songs we sang was the sound of heaven touching earth. Mm. The sound, the sound of heaven touching, touching earth. earth. There it is. When we were earlier singing the song about the sound of heaven touching earth, the Lord spoke to my heart that as we worship, we are the earth mm -hmm. that it is touching first. Yeah. yeah, it's good because we're out of the dust of the earth as well as born of the Spirit. So it's heaven and earth in the same place at one time on. in our human bodies with the Holy Spirit That's being right. in us. That's good. And so we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, so we've got some earth up in heaven, if you will, but That's it's right. our spirits. Yep. Now, the thing I heard was the sound of heaven touching earth. You had a prophetic word at prayer meeting on Thursday night that was so powerful, just spontaneously came out of you. Joanne came up and recorded it as you were walking, not remembering what you said. What was that? That was about the sound mm. being released yeah. into the heavens from this location, yeah. from this assembly. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, I, could, I remember a little bit of it that God was again awakening and releasing a sound from this region and from this city. Yeah. That God had birthed this city to be a release of sound that affected generations. That was actually a generational sound. And that this sound that God was releasing was not coming from the east of the city this time. It was coming from the west of the city, even from this place, that God was beginning to awaken and release a sound that was going to be a generational sound that was going to literally cause thousands to begin to come and to echo the sound that God was releasing from the west. I re if I remember correctly, that God emphasized several times in that word that it is a, not a sound from the east, it's from the west he of did. the city. It's not a sound like the east, it's a sound from the west that God was bringing in, into the city and out of the city because the anointing of the mantle on the city was to really sound. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. That's Bless great. you. Bless you. Now, we got a bit of a ring or an echo, I mean, Gerald. Can we maybe get that out of there? Thank you, Lord. I'll go up here, and if I, if, if I appear too small, just let me know. I'll move down there. You always like to be look, look like you're bigger than smaller. I think that's a man thing. Amen. Ladies want to look smaller. Men want to look bigger. You know, well, Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we believe it's going forth uh, with power. It's already gone forth in the worship, and we pray blessings, Lord God, on everything that we put our hands to. May it prosper in Jesus' name. This message this morning, the Lord really put it on my heart real strong. Um, as Dr. Charles and I were in prayer this morning for about an hour, 20 minutes, over the phone, we were having revival. That's what causes revivals, folks, is the prayer. And I'll tell you what, when you start to see a hunger for prayer in your life increasing, it means you're getting revival in your own life. And then sustain that prayer and inc increase it with others involved. Get a prayer partner. Come to a prayer meeting. Uh, pray more wherever you go. Pray in tongues if you have the fullness, infilling of the Holy Spirit, the fullness. Amen? So this message I entitled today is, Shalom is here. Have hope. Shalom is here. Have hope. 
one of the things the Lord told me to share on um, when, if I was called upon uh, at the last Saturday's um, Mission Mississippi Outreach, not Mission, Revive Mississippi Outreach, was he said, there's a lot of fear out there. Give them hope. Give them hope. And folks, a lot of times what the enemy will do is he will use fear to destroy your hopes, which is the happy anticipation of future good coming your way. He'll use the economic crisis that we're going through along with the health crisis with the virus. He'll use those twins to come and bash your hopes and try to destroy them. And if not ours, um, those that are of others around us and in the world. Uh, so that people start, it's a, it's a trickle down and it's a snowballing effect so that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until before you know it, people like lemmings are running over cliffs just because the one in front of them is doing it. If you don't know what that is, look up lemmings. They'll go over a cliff into the sea uh, just for no good reason uh, periodically. And <laughs> they can't figure out why they do it, I think. But I just wanted to say a few words here uh, about uh, shalom and, and start out by saying that, do you know that Jesus works from home? He's, he's in heaven. He's up there working. But also, he's in you and me working. And this is his home. Jesus is not a foreigner in the body of a believer. He's right at home. And that's where he wants to do his greatest work through the Holy Spirit. So when we let him break out, when we say, Lord, I'm willing to surrender whatever I have for your purpose and usefulness, that is when we start to see this spreading out of the kingdom of God more. So I want to encourage you with that. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says there in the Passion Translation, Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. In the note on the Passion Translation, on that verse, something very, very interesting I hadn't seen before. It says, quote, the Aramaic can be translated, quote, I have been standing at the door knocking. I have been, like he's been there a while, end quote. Jesus knocking on the door points us to the process of an ancient Jewish wedding invitation. In the days of Jesus... A bridegroom and his father would come to the door of the bride-to-be carrying the betrothal cup of wine and the bride price. Standing outside, they would knock. Now this is, remember, about a wedding invitation. Standing outside, they would knock. If she fully opened the door, she was saying, yes, I will be your bride. Jesus and his Father, in the same way, are knocking on the doors of our hearts, inviting us to be the bride of Christ, end quote. Just think about that, folks. That's one of the most intimate verses in Scripture. Only we don't see it that way. We just see Jesus saying, and I will come in and dine with you or sup with you and you with me, meaning we're going to have a meal together. But this is an invitation to enter into covenant, which I've been teaching on for 10 weeks on Wednesday nights. It's the most powerful concept covenant is. I mean, we wear rings about it. Uh, you know, we, we will even uh, die for it. Hopefully, we're willing to if it came to that. Uh, but what it is, folks, is it's a covenant between the Father and His Son and mankind. That if we will answer the call, He will come in and He'll make His home in us. So we become the home of, of God by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus the Lamb. Very powerful stuff, because where I'm getting to, folks, is where I'm getting to, it has to do with the coronavirus, believe it or not. It's all going to tie in. Just stick with me, okay? Because in Psalm chapter 34, verses 11 through 14, in the Passion Translation again, this is what it says. It says, come children of God and listen to me. I'll share the lesson I've learned of fearing the Lord. You know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? It says in verses 12 and 13, Do not want, do you want to live a long, good life, enjoying the beauty that fills each day? How many of us want that? You want a long, good life filled with the beauty in each day. Then, never speak a lie or allow wicked words to come out of your mouth, like gossip. Backbiting, 
criticizing, uh, you know, cursing people with our words and things like that. Never, if you want a good life, don't speak a lie and don't speak evil words out of your mouth. Verse 14, here's the key verse I want to get to also. It says, keep turning your back on every sin and make peace, quote unquote, your life motto. Make peace your life motto. Practice being at peace with everyone. So that word peace shows up two times in that last verse there. That word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. It is ultra important to understand what this word means. In this passion note, on this verse 14, it says this, quote, Twice the Hebrew uses the word shalom. This word means much more than peace. It means wholeness, wellness, well-being, safe, happy, friendly, favor, completeness. To make peace a peace offering, secure, prosper, to be victorious, to be content, tranquil, quiet, and at rest. I mean, how many of you would like even half of those things? I mean, manifesting experientially. But you know what? All of that is the package that comes with somebody who opens the door when Jesus knocks. Because even as the groom-to-be and the and the father would be at the door knocking together, and they've got the, the cup. Didn't Jesus talk about the cup that he would drink from when he says, can you, my disciples, drink from the cup I am about to drink of, speaking of his sufferings? And then Jesus drank, I think, from the second cup of the Passover when he instituted uh, the Passover. It was the second cup that he said, this is my blood. This is the cup of my blood shed for the removal or remission of sins. So we see here that there is a lot to be made out of cups. And this cup of the wedding that the father would bring along with the groom, the father of the groom and the groom would bring, that was an intimate thing because there needed to be a witness to it as well. Like if she opens the door all the way, the father's looking and saying, she opened it, son. You know what I'm saying? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. And so God knows if you've opened the door or not. God knows if you're peeking out the window, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and you're looking at Jesus and saying, yes, I want to be your bride, but I don't want you to come in. It doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? He's got to come fully in. You've got to open up your heart and mind. It means it's a surrender because you're going to be thinking like Jesus if he's coming in. You are. I mean, there have been people that have told about how the, the Lord would come and encounter them and he would tell them that there were certain rooms in their hearts that he wanted to go into and he wanted to see what was behind the door in their heart house. And they would tell him, no, Lord, I don't want you to go into that room. It was their secret room where they do whatever they want in. But you know, that's the door he wants to go in, in the heart house. And so, as we look at this, uh, so this word shalom uh, appears twice. And then this is an extremely important uh, explanation that I'm about to say from this commentary in the Passion Translation. The pictograph symbols for the word shalom. So, you know, like Greg, you were saying about the word uh, crisis. Um, the Chinese came up with that word crisis in a pictograph form. So to, to show you what crisis looks like, they draw a picture of danger and then they put and and then it's opportunity. They draw a pictogram of opportunity. So in every crisis, there's both danger and opportunity. And that's where we're at right now. In the body of Christ, this crisis is an opportunity to be a witness to, to others about the glory of God in Christ in us, the hope of glory, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that's what we want to understand is how can we push through our own fears and our self-concepts that limit us to becoming someone who changes very little, to becoming somebody who's a full-blown image of Christ carrier. And so that's what I want to look at. So here's the pictogram. Here's what the pictogram lo looks like of shalom in Hebrew. It says these, it's the, word, it's the words shin, S-H-I-N, 
Lamed, L-A-M-E-D, Vav, V-A-V, and Mem, M-E-M. And those four words as a pictograph read, destroy the authority that binds to chaos. Destroy the authority that binds to chaos. So when Jesus comes in with his shalom, his completeness, his well-being, his peace, his, his victory, and everything else and more that we read about it is the definition, what he does is he comes in and he destroys that sin nature. He destroys the authority of Satan that he has over us because we have that sin nature and we do the, the sins because we're under the law and the power of sin is through the law. So Jesus comes in and gives us his grace because he fulfilled the law with his last breath. He said, it is finished. In other words, he fulfilled the complete law on our behalf and he never sinned once. When he did that, when he said that, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he breathed his last and he released it. And then, folks, it was finished. His war against the prince of darkness and all of those demonic hosts and their presence in people like the scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites, it was done. And he had accomplished the shalom that he came to bring. So what the shalom does, it binds the authority. Okay, it, takes a, it binds that authority that has us held by chaos, destroys it. Destroy the authority that binds to chaos. And then what happens is we get set free so we're not living chaotic lives. So we're not drug addicted without any help or hope of getting rid of it hardly. You know, we're not sexaholics. You know, having to have another uh, fling in order to make it feel like there's something to life to enjoy. Or whatever, or be a thief, or a robber, or even a murderer. See, that stuff, what all of that, folks, is it's the chaos of Satan. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Folks, if that's not chaos, I don't know what is. And you know what this coronavirus, this COVID-19 is? It is causing havoc. It is causing chaos. And I'm going to propose to you today that what Jesus did when he took stripes upon his back was he paid the price through the covenant of shed blood for not only our sins to be forgiven, but also us to be healed and walking in divine health. It's both. It's in, in health and it's that we can be restored to health. In and to. Okay? Now, it's important. If you take a look at the coronavirus, the Lord was showing me something about that today. What the coronavirus does is it has these spikes on it. And the spikes on the coronavirus are very important and instrumental because what they do is this, this spike-like uh, virus ball, if you will, it goes up to a healthy cell and the spikes stick to the cell wall on the outside. Once those spikes stick to the wall, the cell opens up and it lets it in. Okay? Now, they're talking about coming up with a... Um, an antivirus medication or uh, an inoculation, but it's what it's going to do is it's going to deal. You know, there's DNA, deoxynucleic uh, rubic acid. There's DNA and there's RNA. Well, these this that they're working on right now, it's going to attack the RNA in the virus itself, and it's going to be a counterattack to destroy the virus before those spikes can attach to your cell. That's what I understand they're, they're planning to do, okay? But what I'm saying all this for is this. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. But what I'm saying is this. I am a, a studier of God's word that what Jesus' blood does is it causes his shalom, causes there to be that destroying the authority that binds to chaos, okay? What, what that virus does is it has an authority and it binds people that have it to the chaos of sickness and perhaps even death. And I believe that God's shalom is coming to destroy. And it's here. It's been here for thousands of years. It's here to destroy the authority that binds to chaos. 
Because our authority is under Jesus now. We were under the authority of our father, the devil, Jesus said, before we give our lives to Christ. That's our father. Now, there's more to this uh, quote. It says, the noun shalom is derived from the verbal root shalom, which means to restore. In the sense of replacing or providing what is needed in order to make someone or something whole and complete. I'll read that again. It says, the noun shalom is derived from the verbal root shalom, which means to restore, quote unquote, in the sense of replacing or providing what is needed in order to make someone or something whole and complete. So shalom is used to describe those of us who have been provided all that is needed to be whole and complete and break off all authority that would attempt to bind us to chaos. It breaks off all authority, Shalom does, that would attempt to bind us to chaos, including this COVID-19 virus. You see, folks, I believe we live in a world where we've, we've become, um, we're not comfortable with sickness, but we've become um, aware of it to the point where we don't believe we can do anything about it. When the scripture teaches over and over and over in, in Exodus verse 15, 26, very important verse there that I'd like for us to look at and see what that is saying there. It says, thank God, thank God, folks, really, that one of his natures is healer. Okay, and we're not saying this is a small piece of the, of the, of the puzzle of who God is. It's a major one. Exodus 15, 26 says, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. In other words, he's Yahweh Rapha. That's how it's uh, written in the Hebrew. The Lord who heals, folks, is a compound name which God calls himself. You know, I mean, you could call yourself, you know, what you want. It doesn't mean that's who you are. You know, it may be who you want to be. Like, uh, you know, Gideon, uh, God called him, O oh, man of valor. And Gideon was looking around. Like, who's he talking to? I'm hiding in a wine press, sifting wheat. Well, folks, but God says who he really is. He's Yahweh Rapha, the Lord our healer. The Spirit-filled Life Bible notes about this being one of his attributes to Israel. It says the covenant of healing is made absolutely certain by the fact that God joins his mighty name to the promise, calling himself Yahweh Rapha, meaning the Lord who heals. Here his very name declares it to be his nature, to be the healer to those who obey his word, to recover to health and to sustain in health. End quote. Now, folks, I'd ask you, if you're a member of the body of Christ through faith in Jesus, if there is sickness in your body, would you want to get rid of it? I would think so. And so well, who do you go to? You acknowledge that the Lord God Almighty, it's his nature to heal. It's his nature. I mean, it's his nature to restore. It's his nature to prosper. It's his nature to bless for those that obey his word. That's key. Okay, so it means where it says that you need to receive Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. But you want the healing of your sicknesses, but you don't want him to be your savior. You know, you don't want both. You don't want it all. You don't want the whole package. You just want the healing part. It doesn't work that way. Okay, you have to come through the door of him as the sheep, shepherd of the sheepfold and receive the shalom of God, which is the wholeness, the completeness. It's the rest. It's the victory. It's the, it is the peace of mind. It's the favor. It means you're going to be a person that is kind to people and all kinds of other things. I need more of that. <laughs> now, I want to go over another verse just to get this down about this word shalom. Because sometimes we figure out, I just can't get a hold of peace or what it means or how I get it. <laughs> In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Very, very important verse. Because like it says in Psalm 34, verse 14, where there's two pieces, two words named peace, this has double peace. 
It says in the Passion Translation, perfect, absolute peace. Or shalom, shalom in the King James Version. Perfect peace. Perfect, absolute, absolute peace surrounds or watches over those whose imaginations are consumed with you. They confidently trust in you. So folks, it's really important that if you want to have perfect, absolute peace, we, our imaginations must be consumed with God. It can't be like you take a vitamin in the morning. You know, and you feel better all day. It has to be a consumption, meaning we are eating him as daily bread. We are feeding on him. He is everything to us, and we know we are everything to him. It's an exchanged life. In the Spirit-Filled Life Bible note on verse 3, it says, Perfect peace is expressed in Hebrew by the words, Shalom, Shalom. A Hebrew method of putting emphasis on a word. You will keep him in everything the word shalom implies is what that's saying. You will keep him in health, in happiness, well-being, peace, and all the other things we talked about. The word translated mind is not the usual Hebrew word, but rather it is a word meaning creative imagination. If you will keep God in your creative imagination fully, he will keep you in perfect peace. Isaiah's thought is that he whose creative imagination, the seat of plans and ideas, is firmly founded on the eternal Lord, will enjoy shalom in all its implications, in all the things it promises and means. So that's really important, folks. So we have to scrutinize our imaginations, our our creative minds, where we plan and think. And if we find anything in there, once we frisk our thoughts, I mean, arrest anything that doesn't look like Jesus, you know, that is sinful, planning for sin, things like that, then what happens is the shalom of God becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So that every day, like you were, I believe you were talking about that, Greg, God's working and you're changing even if you don't notice it. That's where it's happening, folks. I believe we are more changed in our sleep than we are in our waking hours. In our waking hours, we're very consumed with this world of visualization that we see things with and, and the hard materiality. But when we sleep, God comes stealthily into our subconscious mind. And he works below the surface where real change takes place. That's why you have a dream life. I mean, my wife just, you know, she's a wild dreamer. I mean, I, in the morning, my first words are, are after I say, good morning, what did you dream? Did you have any dreams? And she said, yes, I did. This morning she said that. And I said, what did you dream? And wouldn't you know it with what's going on around here? She said, I dreamed that I was triaging a, a patient or intubating. Now, Laura, you are a nurse. Okay, Laura's a nurse here. I'm coming down. Praise God. Laura, what does it mean to intubate somebody? I hope it's not gruesome. Well, you, you have to straighten out their airway a little bit, and then you slide a tube into their airway to hold their airway open. Ooh, because if it's not, what, what's going to happen? Because if they're overly sedated, they may not be able to hold their own airway open. So you're sustaining it for them. Okay, you're sustaining. You're helping yeah. people breathe. Yes. Ooh, that sounds important. And guess what? My wife was saying, I'm getting tired. I'm intubating all these people. It wasn't just one man. There was a bunch of them. So guess what, Amra? You were in her dream. Yeah, do you know that you went, uh, you did a dream travel last night. You went to my wife's dream. Okay, you were in it, and you know what she did? She was showing you how to intubate. Come on. Hey, hey, folks, study about breath and how important it is. What did God do after he formed Adam out of the dust of the ground? That speaks about this outer shell. God breathed into him the breath of life. God was intubating Adam in a way. You know, he was giving him breath of life. And then when Jesus raises from the dead... Praise God. And he comes in and visits his disciples and he appears. He tells them, fear not. And then what does he do? He gives them an assignment. They're going to go, you know, and forget whoever sins you forgive, they'll be forgiven. Whoever sins you retain, they'll retain. And then he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathes on them. 
So in the original creation, God breathed into Adam And then in the recreation, where we become born again from above, where we get that that, uh, Christ breaks the authority uh, of chaos off of our lives, we get the Lord breathing upon us. Amen? So we have God in us, in the Holy Spirit. We have God upon us for the sake of others. And folks, this kind of stuff changes the atmosphere. It's kingdom authority. It's what it takes in order to change the surroundings around you. It's because you know who you are in the Lord Jesus and you know what he did for you. So when you know what shalom is and the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy your health, let's start with health. Okay, you say, no way, devil. I'm not going to start believing that every little sniffle and thing that I have is coronavirus. You see, he comes in stealthily, folks. He really does. He comes sneaking in. Yeah. You know, did you ever hear about the camel, how it gets just a, it, it wants just a hoof in? And if the person who owns the tent lets the hoof get in, the camel brings the leg in. And before you know it, the whole camel is in the tent. That's how it works. They, they're, they're wily, these camels. I don't know one. I never want to. You know, I carry, they carry fleas, and I don't even want a cat with fleas. But anyway, what the point is here is that we can't let the devil get a foothold in our thinking because we need to use the word of God as a covenant uh, word to us of love and intentionality. Don't you know that Jesus being the groom of the bride, his body, don't you know he knows how to be a perfect husband? Jesus knows how to care for us. He said, I am bringing a bride to myself. I'm going to pay everything. Remember, they had to bring the dowry. Right? They brought a cup of wine, and the father probably had the wine, and, the, um, and they had to have the dowry. Jesus is the dowry, folks. Jesus is the payment price for sin that was going to buy us back to freedom from sin's power and death's control of, through fear. And so we're now free, and this coronavirus thing, we say no to my body, no to you to my body. We don't, we don't cohabitate. You know what I mean? You know, and that's another thing. I just mentioned that word cohabitate. I know that this coronavirus is of the devil, and I can tell you why. It's because in cities that are shutting down, they're forbidding marriages and funerals. Now, I'm telling you what, yeah, you, know, uh, uh, you know, just when you want to marry somebody to get them out of the sinful state of living together without, without marriage, they're going to have to live in sin a bit longer. You know, that's what I'm, you follow what I'm saying, okay? And you know what, if somebody's, you know, up in Canada, I mean, you could just leave the casket outside in the winter, I mean, it's so cold, they have to put him in. I'm not kidding. It, it's so cold outside up north that they have to put him in refrigeration because the ground is too hard in places to dig. You, they just can't dig it. Wow. That's how hard it gets. So you have to pay a refrigeration fee for the body, and then when the ground thaws, you b- bring it out and you put it in the ground. Amazing. I don't know what that has to do with this message, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> it's, it has to do with funerals. That's what it had to do with marriages. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So I really want to encourage us about living in shalom, shalom. And it's not just peace of mind. It's complete well-being. It is an, being intertwined, interconnected, interfaced, like a threefold cord that's not easily broken. You are in with Jesus in every aspect that he wants to be to you. And wants you to be to him. A bride and a groom. Think of that. Bride and groom. We're the body of Christ. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Gave himself. That's how Greg, you're to love Joanne. I'm to love Dory. Randy's to love Sharon. Charles at home with the children is loving his wife Laura who is here playing the cello. Amara is engaged June the 20th of this year. That, you know what they say, tying the knot. I don't know why they called it a knot, but uh, when I first came here with my wife to, and, and to do a wed, to do a, it, the first thing we did in the first month we were here, I had to do a, I did a funeral for a man from this church who'd been here a long time. Do you know it took three pastors? Yeah, because I don't think they trusted me yet. <laughs> it took the two former pastors to help do that. And so then I did a wedding of a, of a couple in this church. And they were from a previous church. And so it took five pastors to marry them. 
um, I mean, four, you know, two of us were married couples and we were all ordained and then a single ordained person, five pastors. That couple is still together to this day. Folks, it's important. That's covenant. That's covenant when you get married. So I want to encourage us today that we ask Jesus right now to strengthen our mental abilities, capacities to accept what he has done for us. Amen? He will keep in perfect peace all whose minds are stayed upon him. That means our minds are fixed, our minds are filled, our minds are committed, surrendered fully to him as much as we know how to be. Amen? Amen? So then we become, as Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is is risen upon you. Okay? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's Jesus, folks. And it says that darkness is going to... Pastor Greg, could you bring that second verse up of that, verses 2 and 3 of Isaiah 60? Because, folks, it says darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness. But here's what we are to be in this hour of visitation of this virus. We're to be something altogether different. Isaiah 60 verses. You can read 1, 2, and 3 if you will, please. I will. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and a deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will raise you up, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your shining. Verse 4, lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried in in, in the arms. Amen. That's what's to happen with us. Folks, really, the darkness of fear is covering the earth right now, and for good reason. I mean, I grieved yesterday when I read that in Italy... I believe it was yesterday, they had a total of 473 people die in one day. Unbelievable figure, folks. That that was in the north, in in, uh, the province that starts with an L. That's terrible. That is a lot of people dying. They said thousands upon thousands upon thousands in that one province are in ICU. And folks, in ICU, you're basically like one or uh, one person, nurse to one patient or one to two. They are over maxed completely. That's why they're calling for doctors and nurses from around the world. Folks, we need to be the light. We need to be the light and we need to be praying and taking authority. Dr. Charles and I, we were in prayer with incredible authority this morning. Folks, right now, there is incredible release of an anointing from God to be going into the heavenlies and doing transacting of business for the authority of this virus to be pulling itself off and away from mankind from the, and to pull off also the financial collapse of people's businesses, their families. I mean, this is when people's marriages break up. I mean, the, one of the hardest times for people to go through is financial distress. A lot of marriages can't take it. And so I want to encourage you to pray with us for the authority of Christ to be revealed. First of all, the authority that binds to chaos that would take, let this virus try to attach itself to the cells of your body. Say, I've got the authority in Christ that that does not happen. I'm not receiving that. It's not going to be mine. Don't do anything foolish. We practice six foot distancing around here. We don't have, we only have 10 people in the room or less. But what you do is don't be fearing this thing. Don't fear it. Job said, the thing I feared came upon me. And we don't want that, okay? But be praying, interceding, thanking God that he is able and to bring the shalom, shalom, the double shalom, the perfect peace. Having your creative imagination restored. And, and one comment in the... One of the Spirit-filled Life Bible, I believe it is, it says it is, a, it is a shame that we have surrendered our imaginations. We have surrendered them to like an inferior position. We haven't expected that we can imagine changing the world through Christ. 
We've got to take sanctified imaginations and believe that we can go into another nation and we can take the authority that helped to break through when we were six or uh, 11 or 12 of us were in Brazil back in June of last year. It, it, a team of us went in like a, like a um, special ops team with Dr. Don and Ruth Ann Lynch to Brazil, Sao Luis. And in three days, God brought a breakthrough that hadn't been able to be made because a sound was released because there was a unity, a one accordness. And it helped to shift that province that it had human sacrifice in it hundreds of years ago, which was still bringing a pall, a darkness over that region. And so we went in to bring the life of Christ and to break that authority, destroy the authority that binds to chaos. We were in there to do some destroying. We were destroying the destroyer's grip. And you can do it too. You have that calling. You have that mantle. You have that ability and authority in Jesus, but only in him. Don't be a lone ranger. Don't go out on your own. Don't try it at your own hurt to, you know, like Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? You know, the demons jumped on the sons, seven sons of Sceva because they were not submitted to the Lord who Paul knew that gave Paul the authority to cast out the devil. So we want to be under, in authority, but first we have to be under authority. Amen. And so I want to share with you now, Dr. Greg, would you come up here with that microphone, please? Would, would you pray for the needs of anybody right now that has a sickness or a, whatever prophetic word the Lord gives you? Absolutely. Father, we just thank you that you are our healer today. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you know where we are. You know what the body is suffering, what each individual is going through in their life. And Father, we thank you today that by the stripes of Jesus that we're healed. Father, we thank you today, God, that you are touching your people right where they are, right in their home right now. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are freeing your people today from a spirit of fear Amen. because you've not given us that. But, Lord, you're, you're raising up a standard within us that is of love, of power, and of a sober thinking, a sound mind. Father, I thank you right now, dear God, that even physical healing, Lord, is feeling, filling your people's bodies right now. I just see in the spirit that someone here that you're, uh, you are, you're struggling with kidney stones. God is healing you right now. We rebuke those kidney stones in the name of Jesus, and we command them to be gone in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for total and complete healing. I even see a cut on a child's finger that God is healing right now. It's just brought fear into that child's life. And Father, I thank you that you are speeding up that healing process right now in the name of Jesus in this child's finger. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, Lord, even those, I, I pray over those in the medical field, yeah. that, Lord, you're protecting them. You're watching over them. You're keeping them safe. Even as, as they go home, Lord, there won't be a fear or even, even the slightness of an anxiousness in their life, Father, to, to take something home to their family. Lord, your blood is over their doorpost. Your blood has covered their house. And Lord, you're causing this infirmity to pass over their homes in Jesus' name. We just give you praise for that today in the name of Jesus. Someone, your, your blood, I just hear it this way. I don't even know exactly what it means medically. But I just hear the Lord saying that he's raising someone's blood count. And Lord, I just release that in the life of that person today that that blood count is rising to the level that it needs to be in Jesus mighty name someone your nerves and your muscles are not are not communicating well together so Lord I just release healing into that person's body today that you're showing me their nerves and their muscles are not communicating to well I just thank you right now body be healed in the name of Jesus communication come back into alignment in the name of Jesus Father I give you praise for that right now there's someone that you are struggling you've got um I just, I, what, I don't even know exactly what it is, but I, Lord, it's something to do with the jaw, the jaw, the muscles, and the way the jaw is working. And it even has to do with initials that are there. I, I just release healing in that jaw in the name of Jesus. 
Total and complete healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise right now. Lyme's disease, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we decree you are defeated. You have no more authority in this in the body in the name of Jesus. We command you to be gone. So those that are suffering with this Lyme disease, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to be gone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, even those that have been in this area, dear God of, of Mississippi, Lord, and, and Tennessee, Father, Lord, that have contracted this disease, and even those that are watching, dear God, from around the region and the world, we rebuke this coronavirus. We rebuke you and we, 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 we render you helpless and dead in the body in Jesus' name. You will not complete your assignment in the name of Jesus. You die now and you go from the body. We command you to be flushed from the body in Jesus' name. And I release restoration in the body for those that have had this virus. And I say you are being restored, you're being healed, and you're being made whole in Jesus' name mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Life, not death, is ruling in your body. There's someone watching that has had uh, your eye. Your eye is almost like it's late. One eye is lazy. It's closing. But, but it's drooping, but it's, it's some nerves in the back of your eye. And God is releasing healing right now. So whoever it is that has that problem in your eye, I speak healing into your eye. Be restored and be made whole in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Father, uh, I just thank you, Lord, today that, that you're healing people that have suffered from stroke. Thank you, Father. I just see multiple people right now. I'm not sure if you're watching live or you're watching the replay, but God is healing you. Even your left side of your body is being made whole. I speak mobility. I speak to this body. I say be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. And I say that the symptoms of this stroke, the effect of this stroke, the degeneration that this stroke has brought, I rebuke you. The immobilization that this stroke has brought, brought, I break you in the name of Jesus. And I release healing to these bodies that have been affected by this stroke in Jesus' name. So, Father, I give you praise right now that bodies are being totally healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord, that as even as people are sowing today into the kingdom financially, that, Father God, that this house is being blessed financially. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that as people are watching and they're fearful, Father, of of releasing, they're fearful of giving, they're fearful of tithing, that, Father, we break that spirit, that demonic influence of fear. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, that your church, your ecclesia, your people, Father God, are moving in a greater spirit of generosity than they've ever moved in before and you're filling their house with plenty you're filling their barns with plenty you're causing their vats to overflow with new wine so Lord we just break that spirit of poverty we break that spirit of greed and we release today into every home that's watching a spirit of generosity that brings about great harvest in Jesus' name. Thank you for this, Father. We call it in in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Also, I sensed over here that there's somebody here watching that you have never given your life to Jesus. He's knocking at the door of your heart. It's the Father and the Son who want to come in and dine with you, want to make their home in you. They want to come in and make a blood covenant because the power is in the blood and the life is in the blood. And Jesus shed his blood on the cross. So for a full 
effect of the power of his blood covenant to take effect. And folks, it's sinless blood and only one person's ever had that. It's sinless blood to wash away all sinful sins. So I want to encourage you today to give Jesus an open door. Open the door of your heart and let him come in. Amen. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And also, it, the, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So if you have a, a healthy reverence, that's what that fear of God means. It's a reverential fear of the Lord. If you have that, folks, you are going to hate evil. I mean, not tolerate it or say, oh, get out of here. You're going to hate evil and not want to have anything to do with it. And that's what he'll come in and free you from. He breaks the power of sin's control off your life so that you don't have to do the things you know are wrong. And you will do the things you know are right. It, his spirit will take control. And you want it. You want his spirit. Because <laughs> he'll take you higher than you ever could alone. And that self-independent nature that says, I rule my roost and nobody tells me what to do, that is what paves the road to hell. Nobody's going to tell you to do until, what to do until you get to hell. And then you're not going to be able to do anything you want to do. That's what hell is. And much, much more. So I want to encourage you to give your life to Jesus now before it is too late and the opportunity has gone and there's no knock anymore. Give your life to him. Lay it down. Let it go. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I mean, really, folks, your soul is the most important thing you have. It is no doubt the most important thing you have is your soul. And the devil wants it by convincing you that you can do whatever you want and get away with it if nobody catches you. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. God knows. God knows what we're doing, everything we're doing. So I encourage you right now to invite Jesus to come into your heart. Open up wide. Pray something along these lines and mean it with all your heart. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. And I believe that you were raised from the dead. So come now and wash my sins away. And live in me by your Holy Spirit for all the rest of my days till I come to your holy heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you want to let us know, if you're on Facebook, you can send a message there or you can call this number, 662-397-1149 and let us know. And we'd be glad to pray with you and thank God for that. So one final thing is don't forget that you need to stay um, distant from one another. And one of the other most important things you can do is you can wash your hands. Okay? Now I've got some uh, hand uh, sanitizer here. Uh, if you wash your hands, do it for 20 seconds. That's not easy to remember how long it is unless you sing happy birthday to you. If you sing happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, and if you sing it the whole way through, it's exactly 20 seconds long. Okay? So, happy birthday to you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock when we'll be here with the three doctors, and uh, we'll have the medical panel answering questions and telling us the things we need to know about the COVID-19 virus and how to protect ourselves. God bless you. Good day.